this series of videos I'm attempting to repair an ADM3 dumb terminal. In the previous videos in this series we've gone through the main issue with the unit at the moment is that the CRT was broken, the neck had been smashed off it and so I had to find uh, an alternative or replacement. And one thing I've been meaning to do for a few years now is to investigate whether it's possible to fit a tube like this into something like an ADM3. The drive board for this is very common, it's found in one form or another in hundreds of different machines of this era and so I thought it would be interesting to see if uh, a wide uh, high angle deflection um, black and white CRT out of uh, a black and white TV uh, could be used in place of the standard tube. The standard tube does have white phosphor um, but it is a low deflection angle so it's much longer and so um, it requires much less drive uh, current in the scan coils in order to deflect the beam across the face of the tube. So the challenge here is to try and find an easy way to modify these boards to drive a tube like this and see if it's actually possible to do that. Now in response to the previous video in this series someone mentioned that um, in general these uh, boards are X, Y, Z and the tube types and the supply voltages are this, that and the other. Um, you can't really generalise like that. This It's partly true and it's partly not true. Most of these um, boards are used in custom implementations and if we look at the schematic for it, it's actually incomplete. The, you do need to add some external components. Uh, which are in this case the ones on the metal plate at the back and they do vary. Also the components on the board, the values vary as well and in fact the values on this board do not match the um, component values on the schematic. And that's very common with these boards because a lot of the values are chosen specifically for the type of tube. And again the comment said that these use 12 volt heaters, which in the most part they do, not always, but mostly they do. However, quite often that heater voltage is derived through a fixed value resistor and the system is expected to run at a particular voltage. And although the comment said they're 12 volts or 15 volts or whatever it was, um, again that's not uh, accurate, it depends on the specific system. Even within the ADM3 itself, I've seen three different supply voltages for the CRT monitors. I've seen 15 volts, 22 volts and 25 volts and it does make a huge difference to the component values that are required on the actual board. So you will find there's a huge variation so if you're experimenting like this I advise you don't just generalise um, because you will probably damage the tube or damage the board or both. It's best to measure it first, see what you have and go from there and you'll find it's far easier and you'll get better results than just uh, making an assumption that it's supposed to run at a certain voltage because it will depend on the particular board and what machine it was fitted to as to what voltage it expects to run at and that should be your starting point but you're not necessarily going to know that because as I said it does vary from machine to machine. So what I've done so far with this, I've got it hooked up like this and I've been experimenting, looking at ways to try and increase the drive and that's the main issue here is I've got two issues. One is to increase the drive to get the required deflection. If you saw the last video you'll see that or you saw that we only got about 60% of the uh, image size that we wanted and uh, obviously we need to increase that. Now someone else suggested uh, moving the scan coils back along the uh, neck of the tube and the idea there is because the um, effectively the, the uh, scan coils have more authority of, of the final destination of the electrons, um, it should enable you to get a bigger image. Unfortunately, that doesn't really work on these high angle tubes. As soon as you move the coil back um, along the neck of the tube, you'll get vignetting, which is um, like a shadow at the corner of the, uh, the trace, because the angle of the tube is so acute that as soon as the scan coils are moved back the electron beam when it tries to uh, access or reach the extremities of the tube it hits the uh, neck of the tube or where the beam exits the neck of the tube so you can't really do that either. Um, 
It's not that difficult to change the drive of these boards. However, another comment that was interesting was um, if you just purely increase the drive, you'll start getting linearity problems. And that will be our main challenge here is to keep this linear. And that's kind of what I've been working on. Um, the comment did say there wasn't any correction on this, but there actually is. And it's, this is quite a clever circuit. And um, if you haven't seen this, I'd advise getting hold of this circuit. It's, it's in many different um, machines. Just look at the uh, CRT circuit for an ADM3, for example, and you'll see this. Um, it's also the same circuit that was in the Hazel Time that we looked at um, uh, in the few videos um, long ago. And um, one of the uh, issues, as I said, is the component values in this are different depending on the implementation. And that includes the scan correction. Now, the scan correction are things like this. It's a pair of capacitors in series, and there's a center tap that is used through a variable resistor to give you linearity adjustment, and that modifies the waveform. And there are other uh, component values included in this that change the what would be a sawtooth current waveform into, a, a, or it adds a, a parabolic element to that to correct the, um, the scan, and it makes it linear. So you don't actually want a linear um, sawtooth when you're trying to drive this, because it is, of course, a current um, driven system, it's not a voltage driven system, it's magnetic deflection so you need to give it a fairly weird looking uh, current drive in order to get a linear trace on the display. Uh, so you can correct the, uh, the scan and you can make it linear by selecting proper values for these. So what I've done, we'll look at the trace in a minute, but what I've done so far is just change a few values. I've adjusted the height and width of course and uh, even maxed out, there were no, in fact it was maxed out last time you saw it and that gave us about 60% so that's nowhere near enough for what we want. Um, looking at the machine this will be in, it's running at 20 volts so that's what I'm aiming for. I couldn't just ramp up the supply voltage to 20 volts as things stood because I was going to end up with about 16 volts across the heater. And again, as I said, this is incomplete. The heat is driven through an external device on a lot of these, quite often a transformer. In um, a lot of the implementations, there is just a resistor. So you might find there's a resistor, uh, a fixed resistor in the, um, the heater supply path. And the problem there is the voltage you get at the heater will, of course, be dependent on the current the heater draws not just the voltage it's intended to run at. So again, be uh, warned there, just because it's a 12 volt heater doesn't mean you'll get 12 volts across it if you just swap the tube. So even though both tubes, for example, might have a 12 volt heater, if you swap it and one heater draws significantly less current than the other, you could end up with a very high voltage and burn out the heater. Uh, so what we've got uh, set up here is I've got the multimeter that we'll have a look at in a minute and it's hooked up across directly across the heater. I've added some extra fixed resistors to keep the heater voltage pretty much at what it was within the TV. I think it's a 12 volt heater but it was running at 10.6 that was more than enough so I'm going to leave it at that. It will extend the life of the tube. Um, I've also changed some other values in order to increase the width and the height and uh, keep the linearity correct. So the first thing I've done is I've modified the width control, I've reduced its inductance. And the way this system works, there are three elements, well four if you include the capacitor, but there, were, uh, there are three basic inductive elements. One's the line output transformer, one's the yoke, and one is the width control. Width controls the uh, the tall inductor we see sticking up off the board. Uh, there's an adjustable core within the width control that you're supposed to wind in or out to give you the correct width. Um, but the way this works is this kind of stores energy in a certain part of the deflection and it gives you uh, what amounts to a, a kind of overdrive for the deflection and the amount of overdrive you get depends on the inductance. And so I've modified that and I've modified it simply by removing the core and taking off a few windings. So I've, I've removed six windings from that and removed the core. Uh, I've also modified some resistor values. So the first one I changed 
was for the height and that's this resistor here now it says 3.3 ohms on uh, the schematic but it was actually 8.2 ohms like I said it kind of depends on the tube that's fitted um, but I've removed that and I've replaced it with a 5.5 uh, ohm resistor and um, I did that because as a kind of ratiometric estimation it should give us the correct height um, I've also modified the value of the resistor that feeds the um, uh, the width uh, the, um, the horizontal drive and I've changed the value of the resistor that was driving this again the value on the schematic didn't match uh, the value that um, was on the actual board um, I, it was a 56 ohm resistor that was on the board I've changed that to 22 ohms and that's to increase the drive um, in the left hand part of the scan um, I did that because although I was getting the width that I wanted with the other modifications um, it was non-linear I was getting compression on the left hand side of the skin uh, so that's now brought the, uh, the horizontal back into a nice linear form uh, one thing I didn't mention on the Hazeltine I said I repaired um, these boards the, um, this device had failed the horizontal driver had failed um, but I replaced it with a different device and I replaced it with one of these. This is uh, an MJ, you, know, you can see that's an MJ15025G. And this gives a much higher, or say much higher, it's about 15% more efficient drive. So it lowers the current that's been um, pulled by the, uh, the system uh, quite significantly, it runs a lot cooler. But it also gives about 10% more width um, to the scan. So I haven't done that yet. I might well do that um, on this board because it also is a much higher current, and higher voltage device than the one that's fitted. So it uh, should be more reliable. As I say, I haven't done that yet, but um, I might get around to doing that. And um, the rest of it, I did have to replace one capacitor, but I replaced it with the same value. And that's just because it had failed and it was giving us um, a bit of uh, compression at the top of the uh, scan. So we'll look at the screen now, move the camera so you can see it with just the modifications I've done so far and uh, we'll see what impact it's had and whether we're getting any closer. So looking at the face of the CRT, I'll turn the power on. You can see now that we are getting a fairly sensible uh, voltage across the heater. It's, it's rising as the heater heats up. And uh, we're getting about 10.6, 10.7 volts or so, which is what it was in the um, TV that this tube was fitted to. So I decided to keep it the same. I'll turn the light off so you can see the face of the CRT better. And we'll now turn on the horizontal drive and the video feed. So you've seen flickering on the screen. Um, but that's not evidence in real life, that's just again an artefact of the uh, camera uh, shutter. Uh, but as you can see we're now at the correct size. Um, that's, we don't need to go right to the edge of the tube as you would on a TV. Um, on the ADM3 we only use about 80% of the width of the tube and the height of the tube. You can't see the very edge anyway, it's inside a case. And the same with the height, um, even less of the height is used on the ADM3. Very nice bright uh, display, you can see we're getting very nice um, full black and full white display. And we've got good control over the brightness, uh, it's turned a bit high at the moment, I can turn it down further. And uh, we're also getting fairly reasonable linearity, it's not particularly clear because of the angle the camera's at, but we're getting exactly the same spacing at the left hand side of the screen as we are at the right hand side that's what the change in resistor value was for I was getting compression at this side um, not sure about top to bottom I'm not even sure if it's scanning the right way at the moment whether it's scanning top to bottom or bottom to top but um, I can just reverse the connections if it's wrong uh, to the scan coils okay so that's where we are we now uh, have a big enough picture for the ADM3 and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is tidy up the wiring. Uh, we'll, that will improve the, you know, increase the uh, width and height a bit more as we get rid of some of the inductance out of those leads. Um, 
we're getting the right um, voltage on the heater good brightness nice straight scan as well notice there's no real distortion in the edges and it's quite nice and stable so that's exactly what we needed and um, the next step is to try and get this tube fitted into the case that will be our next challenge that we'll look at in the next video